And good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my name is Holly Whittles and I'm delighted to be presenting to you today. I'm going to be talking about LinkedIn and unlocking LinkedIn to unleash your full potential. So I'm a TEDx speaker, I'm also a director of two digital companies and my background is corporate and I set up my own business because I wanted to work with entrepreneurs and small businesses and feel like I was sort of giving back. Uh, this year I was voted one of the top 40 women in tech, I was awarded a certificate from the British Computer Society in 2018 for my work in the digital industry and I've also been voted uh, one of the top 50 women in tech by PCR Online. Um, so in my spare time I'm also also on various business boards and I'm a musician as well. So you might have noticed my first slide was me playing the clarinet. That was me doing my TEDx talk where I spoke about how um, I'm running my business but how being a musician has enabled me to translate some of those skills from playing an instrument into becoming a successful business person. So let's get on with LinkedIn. So unlocking your profile. So I'm gonna start from the very beginning. So what is LinkedIn? It's an online network for business professionals. It's very different to other social networking sites because it's designed specifically for professional networking. So with the idea of finding prospects, connections, people that you want to be connected to, people you used to work with, people that you collaborate with on projects, and you can set up a free account very, very quickly. And there's also a premium version of LinkedIn. And if you're a Microsoft MVP, then you do get that anyway. And I always sort of say to people, you can pretty much do most things in the free version of LinkedIn. But if you do want to take advantage of some of the other additional features, then it's definitely worth trying the free trial just to see um, the kind of things that you can sort of get out of LinkedIn with a bit more uh, detail in the premium version. So back in 2016, Microsoft paid $26.2 billion for LinkedIn, and they've done loads with it since. And they're doing a lot of work around the sort of machine learning and artificial space, just trying to look at the data and organize it and sort of give us the best experience that we can get out of LinkedIn. And there's now over 600 million users on LinkedIn, which is a crazy amount of people. And 40% of those users are actually daily using it. So it's a very widely used tool, especially for sort of businesses, entrepreneurs, and very much used in sort of the technology world. There are 675 million monthly active users, and there's over 30 million companies on LinkedIn. That's a huge amount of people. But one thing that's really interesting is 50% of all social traffic, two websites and two blogs, is coming from LinkedIn. So if you write a technical blog, it's definitely worth posting on LinkedIn so you can actually get people and traffic going to your website. And it's very interesting to see that people have started live streaming on LinkedIn and that's increased by 158% since February 2020. People also use LinkedIn as a recruitment tool. So there's over 3 million active job listings on there. 122 million people have been hired through LinkedIn. 35.5 million have hired by person by someone they were connected with on LinkedIn. This is why I'm thinking you should be on there if you're not already. And there's over 1 billion endorsements on there. So people thanking each other and recommending each other. And one fun fact about LinkedIn, an over overused uh, profile word is motivated. So apparently we're all super motivated on our LinkedIn profiles. So, if I were to give you a one week challenge of optimizing your LinkedIn profile, what would that do to your profile? So here is a graph where I sort of let my activity drop a little bit towards Christmas of um, last year or the year before, I can't remember when it was, I did this trial. And um, all I did was then massively ramp up my engagement by spending 15 minutes a day just adding a few connections and do a, a few posting updates. And you can see there my engagement went up by nearly 2000% just 15 minutes a day. So my post views went up from 49 to 428. That is massive for not a great deal amount of my time. 
So I'm going to talk you through some top tips for optimising your profile. The first thing I wanted to start with is turn off notifications while you're editing it. So if you're going to be doing a load of updates, you don't want to keep letting your entire network do, know, oh, Holly's changed her job status, Holly's added in a new thing, Holly's done this, Holly's done that, your connections are beginning, what on earth is going on? So you might want to turn that setting off. So it's just worth mentioning that if you're going to do a massive load of profile updates. So when you get onto LinkedIn, the first thing that you'll probably see is your profile. So that is where you really get to capture someone's attention. And remember, we're all a bit like goldfish now. Our attention spans are getting less and less and less, six, seven percent, and you know, they're off to the next thing. So you've got to have a really good headline that showcases your speciality, it's creating professional credibility, it's motivating your audience to keep reading the rest of your profile. So that first sentence is where you can really capture it. And if you don't change it, it will just automatically de default to whatever you've put as your job role is. So if you're a developer or an architect or a software tester, it will just say software tester at wherever you work, which, you know, it's, it's true, that might be what you do, but um, it's not very exciting. So you probably want to put a sentence there, a short sentence, what you do and what you do really well. You can also then add keywords and you can separate these keywords with that fence post symbol. So you can, do that, you can do that on a mobile, on a desktop as well. And that's where the algorithm can start picking up keywords out of that headline section. So you come up in the majority of searches if you've really optimised that profile. You also need to look at um, things like your photo and even down to um, the name of the photos that you're going to be uploading. The file names are searchable by the internet. So Google, for example, indexes social media sites. If you Google yourself, your social sites will pretty much come up first. It also does image searches. So if you've got um, optimised file names, including like the, the photo you're going to upload for your LinkedIn profile, that helps your search engine optimization, not only on LinkedIn, but across uh, the internet as well. You can now also add in a voice to your profile. So if you've got a name where people are not quite sure how to pronounce it, you can actually edit your profile and click record name pronunciation. So I had to go with that and actually it's pretty good. So it's worth just quickly changing that and adding that in if you've got a slightly unusual um, surname or first name. So photos, they are a must for a LinkedIn profile. And that needs to be a photo of you where it actually does actually look like you. And ideally not one of you maybe having a beer with your friends, um, probably not one of you with your beloved pets, um, probably not one of you and someone else because then whoever's looking at the profile is thinking, oh, is it them or is it them? Um, so have a think about the picture that you're going to use and make sure it really does look like you and that people are going to recognise you and you probably want to pick a more professional looking photo. So profiles with pictures are more likely to get viewed as well, which is the other reason for doing it. So are you happy with the photo that's on LinkedIn at the moment? If not, it's very, very easy just to edit your profile, just change the picture. And while you're there, you might want to change your cover photo as well. So that's the header photo behind you. It just defaults to sort of a big blue background. But again, that's another opportunity to sort of sell yourself a little bit more, maybe put a picture of um, a place where you work or something that you've done, something that you want to showcase. So um, if you have a look uh, for cover dimension, dimensions on the internet, it will tell you the exact pixel size that it needs to be. It needs to be 1584 by 396. Obviously, you're not going to remember that number, but just put in dimension sizes for profile pic and for cover photo. Make sure you upload them as close as possible because if you haven't got it um, sized properly, then it will get dragged or distor distorted. That's where images start looking really blocky and blurry. And again, you want to have sharp photos that are well lit where they can clearly see your face. So then you start sort of editing your profile. So you've done your headline, you've done your fence post, and you can start adding in places that you've worked. And if, like me, maybe you've worked at maybe more than, more than one place, um, you're going to start ending up with quite a few different job roles in there. Or maybe you've had some promotions within there and you want to highlight each different role within that company. 
Maybe you also do stuff out of work. So maybe you run a user group or you help organize conferences. These are all roles that you could add into LinkedIn as well. But maybe you don't want them to be at the top of your profile. So if you click on that little hamburger icon, you can reorder the profile and you can reorder all your jobs in different roles. You might want to keep the company you work for at the top, but have all the other things that you do for the community underneath it. So I'd recommend adding in as much as you can into that profile section, add in words, add in images, make it look as content rich as, you, as, as possible. You can also add in key skills as well. So if you edit it by clicking the pencil icon on any of these sections, you can add in your key skills. So you get to pick your top three skills and you literally just sort of pin which three are gonna be your top three and then you can drag the order around and then there's loads of other different ones that you can add in. And when people start visiting your profile, then they can then start rating you for those different skills. And likewise, they can also endorse you. So if they've worked with you on a project, worked with you on a uh, community thing outside of work, um, if you've uh, worked together in a job, all of these different things they can endorse you for. They can either decide to do it because they're nice, or you can actually ask for a recommendation and an endorsement. So just click on it and just don't be afraid to ask people. They're more than likely gonna go, oh yeah, of course they will. So do that, get as many as you can and really sort of make your profile stand out and look sort of as, as good as possible. So on LinkedIn, people will start searching for you and you might st start searching for them. So your network um, will show different degrees of connection. So you can start building your network by sending invites out to people. So your first degree connections are people that you're connected with because you've accepted an invitation or vice versa. You've then got second degree connections. So they are people connected to the first degree connections and you'll see a little second degree icon next to them when you start looking for them in the search. Then there are third degree connections. So these are people connected to the second degree connections and you'll see a third degree icon next to them. So sometimes it will only display um, like um, the first letter of their name and a little bit more and that's probably because it's been hidden and you can only sort of uh, link with them if you actually know them or you can send them an invitation asking to connect. And also you can connect with people via groups as well. There are also things like LinkedIn members that are out of your networks. They fall outside of all those different categories as well. But most of the time we're searching for first connections, people that you're already connected to or second or third ones where you think, oh yeah, actually I want to, I want to connect with that guy as well. So you can also use LinkedIn search to search for people. So similar interests, role models, influencers, professional networks. And it's very easy on LinkedIn just to use the search bar at the top of the page. So you just type in, say if you were looking for Richard Branson, founder, and you can put in, if you know the name of the company as well, and just start searching for people that you want to connect with. Maybe you bumped into someone at a conference and you can't quite remember their name. You can search by company. There's all sorts of different ways that you can slice and dice the filters. So once you start having a play, um, you'll start easily finding connections and maybe people that you've forgotten that you used to work with. So it's definitely worth spending some time searching for connections on there. So when you found someone, so say if you want to connect to uh, Sarah Connor, um, so I chose this name because of the Terminator films, just as, as a fun example of someone that you could search for, um, you can click on the blue button to connect with her. Um, but you might want to personalize it a little bit more and add some more information as to why you want to connect with her. So, hi Sarah, um, we used to work together on this project, it'd be great if we could reconnect again. Or I stumbled across your profile, really interesting posts, I'd love to find out more. Uh, try not to make it too salesy because I think people are a little bit fearful of accepting uh, requests and then thinking you're just going to instantly spam them. So keep it quite sort of uh, short and explain why you want to connect with them. And if you're connecting on a mobile phone, you can just personalise the invite. So, you know, never just click the connect button. You know, it's, it's kind of uh, chalk and cheese of some LinkedIn people say, yeah, just click the connect button and I'll either accept or not. I tend to sort of recommend the other route of explaining why you want to connect with someone because, you know, our, our lives are so fast and you might have met someone last week and then just forgotten. And that little prompt makes me go, oh yeah, I love speaking to that person. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to accept that connection. 
So you can also do something called in-mail through LinkedIn, and that's where you can actually directly message someone and directly message another LinkedIn member that you're not connected to. And there's some stats around this. The best time to send is 9 to 10 weekdays. So 9 to 10 a.m. weekdays. And 21% of people are more likely to get a response if there's some kind of shared group or connection with that. If you've got a basic free account, you can only directly message LinkedIn members you're connected to. But if you've got a premium account, then you've got a bit more option and you can sort of message a few more people through the in-mail option. So um, in-mail messages can have up to 200 characters in the subject line, over 1,900 characters in the body. So it's just really important to sort of um, get that message succinct. But never connect with someone and then start messaging them or sending them in mails straight away because they're going to be like, whoa, who is this person? So you want to sort of start interacting with them a little bit more, engaging with them, get to know them before you go in with the, right, I want this opportunity or I want to speak at that event or give me this information. You know, you've got to build that sort of rapport and knowledge first. When you're searching for second connections, there's also a tip behind that. So 60% of your secondary degree connections are hidden in the free version of LinkedIn. So if you're searching for a secondary degree connection, you know that they're there. Um, you can actually sort of filter them and you can use this LinkedIn Sales Navigator tool to show these extra people. So again, that's another reason um, to maybe upgrade to the premium version just to get that extra bit of functionality. And again, with all these social platforms, there's always kind of some catch as to why you can't quite get to something and maybe you have to give them a little bit of money to get some more information. Um, so have a play with the premium version as well. So one feature I used to find really useful when I was going to a lot of conferences, obviously we can't do that at the moment, um, but if I was at conferences, if you've got uh, location services turned on and Bluetooth turned on, you can actually connect with everyone that's in the room. So if you go to the find nearby feature, if you click on um, activate Bluetooth, tap my network, and then tap find nearby, you can find all of the LinkedIn users that are in that room if they've got LinkedIn LinkedIn open on their phones at that time. So sometimes um, at events, they might all stop and go, right, we're all going to connect with each other now. We all get our phones out and just start searching for people on there. So um, it's worth um, looking into that functionality if you're trying to connect with a lot of people at an event. But again, remember that why you're trying to connect with someone. It's not just to start spamming them straight away. So one thing I mentioned before when you're searching for people, they're more likely to respond if you've got something in common with them. So there are LinkedIn groups and if you click on the work icon and select groups from the top menu, you can search for relevant groups and you can click click ask to join the group. So you can check out what's happening in that group before it's before you really want to join it. You can have a look at the sort of the posts and the discussions and comments. You can start thanking people, engaging, maybe joining a discussion, starting your own discussion. So maybe ask a question or share some expertise. So don't be afraid to use a little bit of humour as well. So some of these groups can be a great place to meet like-minded people. And it's remembering that people buy people. So you never know where your next connection and what opportunities that might lead for you. So I don't know whether you've heard of the social selling index. So there's something called a LinkedIn SSI score. Um, you have to go through LinkedIn, but to a separate website and log in again with LinkedIn. I'm not quite sure why you can't get to it through your profile, but anyway, it's probably something for Microsoft to answer. But if you go to linkedin.com slash sales slash SSI, log in with your LinkedIn, uh, username, password, you will get your social index selling score. And that's just measuring uh, your lead generation, your sh social selling skills, um, how well your profile is performing compared to other people in your network. So you can start really sort of optimizing your profile and seeing where you're coming up in your community and in your network and start really building that SSI score. 
You can also have things called company pages. So that might be relevant if you're running your own business. Um, if you're part of a company where they're thinking, oh, we need to set up a company page. Um, anyone can set up a co company page. You just need to make sure you've got a company policy for doing so and who's going to be the administrators and the moder moderators of that page. But it's very simple. You click the icon, you create a manage page, or you can actually click manage page. And that's where you would go if you've got a page where you would manage it. There's also something else called showcase pages. So if you've got a product or something that you sell and uh, maybe uh, it's not linked to the company directly, you can actually create just a so showcase page just for that product, just to keep it separate from the main kind of information you want to share on your company page. So there's two different types of things that you can do within the pages. So what's kind of new and happening in LinkedIn? Some of, the, some of these things aren't new, but I've included them because I thought there might be things that you've forgotten or weren't aware of. So just like Twitter and Facebook, you can now pin posts with LinkedIn and businesses can choose uh, what users see first. So when they go to a profile um, or a page, you can start showing them the content that you want them to read first. So they ha can have a featured section where they can give insights into their brand and you know why they're connecting with you. You can also take advantage of something called LinkedIn polls. So there's a polls button feature where you can create uh, polls and add them to posts. So you might want to ask your audience a question and that's a great way to get engagement from people. You might want to do company page invites. You can actually invite people to follow your LinkedIn page and it's just got a lot easier to do that. And company pages are now being given 100 free credits a month, allowing people to invite up to 100 people from their network, from your target audience to follow whatever your company page is. There are things called team moments. So LinkedIn have introduced QDOS. You might have started seeing this popping up on your timeline where you can give QDOS to people and team moments where you want to celebrate something with your teammates and something that's great that's happened within your organization. There's also hashtags. So again, they, they filtered across over to LinkedIn. So you can have hashtags on your posts and you can also have hashtag presentations. And that's just being tested, this hashtag presentation mode. So you might have this functionality, you might not, it might be on its way. Sometimes with these uh, social platforms, they start experimenting with like beta test groups and some people have got things and some people haven't. So don't worry, some of these things, they will come to you eventually. And there's a new video introduction tool where it wants to support um, employers by enabling access to candidate soft skills before an interview. So that's relevant if you're interviewing candidates using a video intro tool. So again, all things that are sort of coming in the future or you might already have access depending on where you are on LinkedIn. But one thing that you've seen probably already happening in your timeline is LinkedIn live streaming. And as I mentioned at the start, this has gone up by 158% since Feb. And that's just massive. So it used to be just for personal profiles, but now they're starting to roll it out for pages as well, sort of streaming content, doing interviews and chats. And again, that's a great way to engage communities and very relevant to the technology sector. You can do invites to follow, so you can invite people to follow pages. And also you can post as a member or a page. So for me, someone that's running my own business, that's really useful if I want to just post as my company name rather than me as the person. So that's something that people have been asking for for a long time. But something that's really, really exciting is LinkedIn Stories. So that is coming. Some people might already have the beta version of it. So again, they're listening to the other networks and seeing what's working really well for them. And again, like Instagram, Facebook, um, the stories are going to be active for 24 hours and then they will disappear again. The other things that you can do is uh, do event creation, public and private from your profile. So events are a great way of networking, doing lead generation. You can promote your events as well. So it's a, again, it's a great way to communicate with attendees of events, ask them to connect with you. You can send them information, you can send them invites, really good way of connecting with people. And you can also do content suggestions through pages. So I manage a few different pages on LinkedIn and what LinkedIn's now doing is starting to push content to me saying, 
you might want to comment that on this or like this post as your page. So I'm like, oh great, yeah, actually I do. So I'm jumping over, liking and commenting as my company on that thing. And LinkedIn has suggested that content to me. So again, like the algorithms learning what I like to see, what I want to engage with. And things like the search engine optimization of LinkedIn as well. So as I mentioned before, um, with your profile pic, if you do the file name, but there's also alt text for posts based on the image as well. So you can now add in extra information into images that you're uploading. And again, that's really good for accessibility. So a lot of people ask me, when is the best time to post on LinkedIn? And my answer is a lot of people use LinkedIn as their daily newspaper. So they sort of look at it before the working day, after the working day. And there's all sorts of stats on the internet about the best times to post on LinkedIn. I mean, generally it's midweek, Tuesday to Thursday, morning, lunchtime, evening. There is a kind of a sweet spot between 10 and 11 on a Tuesday. Uh, but I would say have a look at your own dashboard. When you go onto LinkedIn, it shows you your dashboard of activity. So see when you're getting the best engagement, who is liking and commenting. Have a look at the times that they're doing that. Because with all of these different stats, it's always going to be different for every different, you know, for every single person. So have a look at your own analytics and work out when you're getting the best engagement on LinkedIn. Another question I get asked a lot is, well, what do I post? So how to enlist type posts perform really, really well on LinkedIn. So if you're trying to help people uh, writing a post or an article, again, that will go down really, really well. Um, articles with titles between 40 and 49 characters perform well on LinkedIn. And the average length of a post that converts is about 248 characters. There's a few stats there for you to remember, but it, the basic concept is how to, uh, so telling people some useful information. But there's different types of posts that you might want to do. You might want to do a long form story post where you're sort of telling a big long story about maybe about your history and what led you to where you are. Um, I find those quite hard to get to the bottom of. So I'm a bit more sort of short and sweet and snappy. Um, I might do a video and again, videos are getting really great engagement now on all social media platforms. So who you are, what you do, why you love it, what you're working on. It doesn't have to be too polished. You know, uh, people sometimes have the fear of, well, who's going to watch it? And, you know, sometimes you just have to kind of go for it. Um, you could do a social proof post, like the example that I've just used there on the slide. Someone tweeted while I was doing an event. Uh, that is now something I can screenshot as my social proof and I can share it on other platforms. You could do um, ask for business type posts and you could do something that's going to be a little bit more uh, controversial. So you might say a statement and then loads of people jump on it and go, oh, I can't believe you've put that. And you, you kind of almost get people arguing with each other. And that could be another way of getting engagement. And sometimes those posts are done deliberately to get people commenting on them. So think about the different types of things that you could share on LinkedIn. And again, if you're stuck, start with a simple how to or here's a blog post that I've written remembering a lot of traffic has been driven from LinkedIn to website and blog posts so when you're creating images um, if you haven't come across Canva I would highly recommend it canva.com it's a free tool to use the best bit about it is that it's got lots of templates in there so there's ones for Facebook Twitter LinkedIn Instagram and they are ones that a designer have create has created for you and then you just drag and drop your own photos over it. You can change the text, you can change the colors, but it looks really designed. Um, you can also use it for creating flyers, e-newsletters, -new e posters, business cards, all sorts of things, but I recommend it for social media templates. And there's a very good LinkedIn one there. And there's hundreds of different templates to choose from. So have a look at canva.com. The other thing that came out uh, last year was LinkedIn reactions. So again, they were sort of looking at what was working well on the other platforms. So things like rather than just the like thing, we can now celebrate, we can love things, insightful. Again, this is changing constantly. There's a new icon that's come out <laughs> since I did that slide. So they're kind of a lightweight way of um, getting people to um, engage with your post and show whether they like it or not. 
There's also LinkedIn Live that came out and again, a great way of sharing photos, uh, not photos, videos and getting that really good engagement and getting people to hear from the horse's mouth what's going on. And again, the camera doesn't have to be at your face. It could be turned around the other way. It could be you interviewing someone. There's all sorts of creative things that you can do with video and LinkedIn Live. But if you're not happy doing lives just yet, but you want to have a play with video, why not have a look at lumen5.com? And again, that is a free resource. So lumen5.com, and you can basically turn your content into get engaging videos. So if you sign up for the free accounts, you can put in a web address as a starting point, and it'll go off and scrape that website and bring you some text back. It's got an AI algorithm built into it, and it will try and match some photos to match that text text you can then uh, choose different photos you can edit the text you can choose some royalty free music and you can have a, a nice theme and before you know it you've got a video so I did one on my phone just messing about and it took about 10 minutes to make and I used it for an event where I was trying to get a few more people to sign up for some tickets stuck it out on LinkedIn on a video and that extra few uh, places were filled by the end of the day. And that was just through sending a video. So 74% of internet traffic is from video content and 64% of users are more likely to buy after they've watched a video. So it's always worth thinking about, actually, can I do that in a video? Have a start playing on uh, LinkedIn. So you can also follow LinkedIn influencers. I've put a few there of my favourites, um, some UK based ones, some US ones, ones from all over the world. Melody Duraro, J Janet Murray, Josh Steinley, Helen Pritchard, James Sinclair, Travis Chambers, Dan Knowlton. There's loads of different LinkedIn influencers, but start following them, getting ideas from them, watching their content, getting their top tips. Because sometimes these LinkedIn influencers, they get the features before we do and they get to try them. And then you can get like a little heads up and just start trying things out. So follow the influencers. You don't have to connect with them. You could just literally follow their content. There's also things like linkedin.com slash help and there's a really good help se section on LinkedIn. And there's also something called SlideShare where you can sell extra um, resources and upload PDFs and presentations. So slideshare.net um, is a really good resource for you as well. So before we leave LinkedIn entirely, I just wanted to talk through some of the other networks that you might be able to utilize to help you optimize your social media presence. So first one is Facebook over 2.27 billion monthly active Facebook users. And it was the first network to go over 1 billion people on it. So it's great for increasing your exposure, potential customers, connections, colleagues. It's great for gathering leads, for brand loyalty, for increasing web traffic. And it's got its own kind of analytics built in. It's got Facebook Insights. If you're on there um, as a business, you can create Facebook pages off your personal profile, which more than one person can manage. Manage. And you can also engage in something called Facebook groups. So again, Facebook groups isn't necessarily restricted by the algorithm. So stuff that you post in there is generally seen uh, by a lot more people. There's a lot more organic reach than if you were just to post on your personal profile or if you were to post on your page. Personal profiles get a lot of engagement. Pages are generally restricted to less than 1% of the people that have liked the page. And that's because Facebook want you to pay to boost the post or to give them some money and do some targeted advertising. So if you are on Facebook trying to connect with people and grow your presence and share knowledge and information, you can do that in groups and you can do it uh, through your personal profile. I also want to mention Twitter. So Twitter was one of the first platforms that I joined and I think it's a really, really useful tool, especially for the tech community. So you can join Twitter, again, it's free and you can um, start engaging with people, you can follow people and you can really make use of the hashtags to engage with a much wider audience. So things like the SQL help hashtag and SQL family, really useful for when you're stuck and you're trying to find the answer to 
something, there's people that monitor hashtags and they will get back to you. And they're usually pretty much industry leaders and people that are giving back to the community. So a great way of engaging, finding out knowledge, sharing information, and you can pin tweets to the top, you can do polls, you can do videos, you can do loads of stuff on there. So Twitter is definitely a great place to be for um, the techie type of people. Instagram is a great tool for uh, engaging pictures. So if you want to um, share what you've been doing at events or things that have happened to you throughout the day, um, it's designed for use on a phone and you can just take a picture and you can embed all sorts of filters over the top of it. You can make it black and white or fancy colours or whatever. And the idea behind Instagram is that you use a lot of hashtags in this case. So the more the merrier almost with Instagram. And you can either do that in the post itself or you can do it in the first comment to make your post look a little bit cleaner. And again, celebrities and influencers and big brands are on Instagram and it's really, really good for engagement. It's not restricted as much as Facebook. Um, so again, if you if there's something that where you can be sharing lots of images, that's a really good way of building your following. Pinterest is an interesting one. It's um, very good for products and services. And one of the things about Pinterest I really like is the search engine optimization of it. So whenever you pin an image, uh, you can create a backlink back to the website that it came from. So the idea behind Pinterest is that you create virtual boards of things that might interest you. So it could be a board of um, old geek style computers and you just pin images of uh, geek computers on there or it could be uh, computer games that you like playing and you create a board and you just pin all these images on there of computer games uh, it's a very very visual platform again relevant more for if you're selling sort of products uh, rather than sort of services or yourself and last but not least, you've got to remember platforms, you know, like search engines themselves, so Google. So a lot of internet searches are done on Google. And if you've ever tried Googling yourself, you can start cleaning up some of your social media and personal presence. So things like YouTube, it's the second largest search engine. People spend a lot of time just on YouTube searching for stuff, how-to tutorials. So if you're a blogger, um, it might be worth starting vlogging and and putting some of your videos on there and again you can then start sharing them on other social platforms you can embed them in websites quite easily so under any sort of YouTube video if you click underneath it and click share and then get the embed code you can embed that into your website it doesn't even have to be your video it could be a useful video by someone else that you think would be useful to your audience um, so Google is a great place um, to sort of start engaging and then there are some of the newer sort of platforms, so things like Snapchat and TikTok, and it's generally where the younger generations are at. And again, very visual, um, instant imaging, uh, creating funky videos with loads of uh, different layers and filters. And it depends what you're trying to do on social media as to whether those are relevant or not for you. So my top tips for social media, um, first one is identify your goals. So what is it you're trying to do on LinkedIn? And then work out who are you trying to um, connect with? So who is your audience on there? So what is it you're trying to do with them? What do you want them to do? Um, work out which platform's gonna do that for you. So is your audience on LinkedIn? may not be. Um, for a lot of us, it is. And I, LinkedIn is one of my favourite platforms. But if you haven't got much time, pick the platform where your audience is and do that one really, really well. Plan time for your social media. So you've got to just not just be on there to say that you're on. You've got to spend time being on social media. And it's spending time delivering consistently and in a consistent tone of voice and just being yourself. Um, so don't try and be someone that you're not because people will buy from you. Check out the influencers that I mentioned and spend time growing your audience. So people say to me, oh, I don't get anything out of social media. I'm like, well, how much time do you spend on it? Oh, well, I don't really do anything. Well, that'll be why. So you do need to spend a bit of time to get the best out of these different social platforms. 
engage with your audience, you start using things like hashtags, videos, links. And sometimes with links, it works better if you put the link in the first comments. So if you write your post, and rather than including the link in the post, add it in the first comment. Sometimes that tricks the algorithm and it gets it out to more people just because the um, the URL is not embedded in that post itself. And again, some of these social platforms, they don't like you leaving it. So if they, it sees an external link, they think, oh, I'm not gonna show that to as many people. So you wanna get your uh, organic reach up as much as possible. So measure your results, spend some time uh, looking at the analytics, look at your dashboards, um, see who is engaging with you, look at the times they're engaging with you. So the last thing is plan do and review. So plan to do your social media, actually do it and then review how well it's working for you. And I know that we're all really, really busy, but if you think about that example that I gave at the start about uh, just spending 15 minutes a day on LinkedIn, my profile just went through the roof. So I really hope that you enjoyed that session and you got some good tips out of it. I'm happy to take uh, questions, so please do message me and I will get back to you. And I'm very easy to find on social media. So, and also please connect with me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear from you. So again, thank you very much for your time and enjoy yourselves today.